So, should you 3D print it or injection mold it? Hi, my name is John George. I'm an instructor at the Davis Technical College. I teach people about plastic injection molding. If you'd like to learn more about injection molding, I'd love to have you come take a tour of our program and see what we do to train people. But today we're talking about the difference between 3D printing and injection molding. In part one of this video, I showed you the differences between injection molding and the actual process. Today I want to talk about which one you would use and why. So, a lot of people know about 3D printing today because of all the neat things that you can do at your home with a fairly inexpensive piece of equipment. Not a lot of people know that injection molding is actually the process that produces most of the plastic products parts that they deal with on a daily basis. So, why would you injection mold versus 3D print a particular part? Well, 3D printing is very neat in the sense that uh, you can quickly get a part, uh, but it has some disadvantages in comparison to injection molding. So I manufactured this cap both using injection molding and 3D printing, and there's a little bit of difference in the production time required. So it takes about eight seconds to make one of these caps using injection molding, and it takes just short of two hours to make this cap using 3D printing using this CR10 3D printer right here. By no means the fastest printer on the earth, but it's fairly representative of a machine that you'd get at your home. Uh, so if injection molding is so much faster than 3D printing, why would you 3D print? Well, the difference is in the tooling, the cost of the mold. So in injection molding, the mold that makes this cap and makes eight of them at a time and makes it so that you can have a cap coming out of the machine every eight seconds, the mold is going to cost somewhere between sixty dollars and $80,000. That's a lot of money to commit to one particular part. So typically we don't do injection molding for onesie twosie parts or designs. Um, but this 3D printed part, it doesn't require any tooling. We can just print it on the 3D printer but it comes at the cost that if we want to make a lot of them, it would be incredibly time consuming and expensive to do it that way. So as a general rule, low volume things that don't need the functionality requirements of injection molding can be 3D printed. And things that we're gonna make an awful lot of, like caps for a bottle, that's gonna be injection molding. So instead of talking about just this mundane cap here for this bottle, let's talk about a different application. One of the reasons that people might be using 3D printers is to test out a design, to make sure that the design is right and the product is what they need it to be before they commit the potentially massive amounts of money on tooling for a mold. So let's say that the uh, manufacturer of this product, it's a bottle for gasoline for uh, backpacking stoves, let's say that they had this new concept that they wanted to put a carabiner onto the top of their cap so that their customers could just simply screw the cap onto the bottle and go snap it on the back of their backpack and go take a backpacking just that way. Uh, well, this concept could be generated quite quickly, quickly on a 3D printer and tested very quickly. Uh, for example, I had this idea at about six o'clock in the morning a few weeks ago, and uh, in the very morning, I went ahead and modeled it, uh, borrowed somebody else's carabiner design, put it onto the cap, and sent it over to the 3D printer and started it printing. Uh, I actually had my first test of it by four o'clock that afternoon in, in a draft mode. Yeah, I was able to kind of look at that idea, change a couple things, and then reprint it overnight. And I came up with this part uh, the next day. So if I had taken my original design, sent it to a tool maker to have a mold made, you know, it may have cost $15,000 and may have taken six to 20 or 30 weeks to get that mold to me. And then I could have brought it here into the lab and then made parts out of it. And those would have been very inexpensive parts if I was going to make three or 400,000 of them. However, what if I made a mistake that first time and we made the mold the wrong way and the product didn't come out how we wanted it to? That would be terrible. It would be a huge waste of money and time to make another mold with the new improvements or to try to modify that mold by welding it and remachining it. So we can use 3D printing to test concepts, do early production, see how customers like the product before we commit the huge amount of time and money required to make the mold or the tool for injection molding. So 3D printing can save us a ton of money and help us so that our injection molded products become better. It can also help people who didn't previously have the tool set or the money to go and build a mold to be able to develop products and see what works so that they can go sell that idea to somebody else. 
So thanks again for taking the time to watch one of my videos. If you missed part one, make sure to go back to our Facebook page and check it out just so you can see the differences between injection molding and 3D printing. If this has sparked your interest, come on down. Go down and hit that request time button on our Facebook page and you can set up an appointment to come on in, see our program, look at our machinery, and learn more about injection molding. Thanks. Bye.